Good morning, good morning, everybody. Dimity here, ready for our Joy to the Run step workout. Let me get my camera a little bit better here. Hi, I hope everyone's doing well this morning. It is a Tuesday morning, and we are going to uh, get our step workout on. So what I have behind me, I have a set of steps. Um, if you don't have steps, I'm just trying to get these green dots a little bit less. Okay. Um, if you don't have a step, you can use like a step stool from your toddler's bathroom. You could use a porch ledge if it's warm outside. You could use um, a set of big, you know, a, a stack of books, but make sure they're nice and stable. Um, so all those are possible. Um, I, you don't need any weights or anything. I've made this so that all we need is our body weight, okay? So um, we are gonna get going right now because it is 6.30, okay? So we're gonna start with a warm up. We're just going to start with walking up and down the step. Here we go. So we just do a quick warm up with these um, workouts. This workout is very much like a many happy miles workout in that we come in, we've got 30 minutes, we get it done. We're pretty, uh, we're pretty streamlined <laughs> around these parts. Not a lot of time. Um, we are we don't play music because uh, we get in trouble with infringement copyright issues So if you have your own um, Playlist a holiday playlist feel free to put it on All right, I've just been on my right foot here if you've been alternating keep alternating if you've been on one foot Switch your foot. So I'm just going up and down from the bottom step right now Getting my heart rate up a little bit warming up feeling good or we will shortly if you don't yet. <laughs> All right. Nice work. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. All right, hop off that step. Um, if you have a concrete floor like I do, you may need a yoga mat. <laughs> to kind of uh, cushion the floor a tiny bit if you have something already that, if you have a rug there, you're good. I'm going to do, um, we're gonna do a plank for a minute to warm up our core and our um, the rest of our body. So when you plank, you can either be on your forearms, your knee, uh, your forearms or your palms, your knees or your toes. We're gonna go in three, two, and one. So I'm gonna be on my toes and my forearms, okay? So that means that my elbows are right underneath my shoulders. It means my butt is in line with my body. I'm squeezing my cheeks. I've got a tiny pelvic tilt. My shoulders are nice and wide. I'm trying to kind of break the floor, pull it apart with my elbows or my palms, depending upon what I'm doing it on. If you are on your forearms, a little challenge is to flip your hands up so that you're not clawing the ground. So, um, so you're just using your body. Nice work, you guys. We're over halfway there. Good job, good job. We're planking and we're planking. We've got five, four, three, two, and one. Good work. Come on out of that plank. We're going to stand back up and go back to the step. What we're going to do is a little lunge series, okay? So um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put my right foot up on the step, okay? I'm going to be kind of um, wide here. <laughs> I've got a little bit of a, a space issue. Um, but what you want is you want your right foot um, so that your knee, when you lunge, your knee goes over your ankle, right? If I tip forward a little bit, I can see my toes still, okay? If you need a, a chair or something next to you, you can have that. Um, we're just gonna go straight down and straight up. So when you think about doing a front lunge, I want you to think about pushing your pelvis straight down. Your front knee has very little to do with it. I mean, of course it's gonna bend, but that's not the, move, that's not the driver of the movement. The driver of the movement is your pelvis going down or your back knee bending too. That also works because that brings you back towards the rear of your body and not going, not shifting your weight too far forward. I've got us on the clock, going nice and slow. This isn't a 
lunge. How many lunges could you do in a minute? This is a feel your muscles, feel your back leg. Good work. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. All right, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna have my back to you. I want you to keep that right foot on the step, and then we're gonna do some squats with your right foot elevated, okay? So we're gonna go straight down, straight up, okay? Getting that booty back. I've got us on the clock. We're gonna do this for about 30 to 40 seconds. Good work. So my, both my toes are pointed forward. My gaze is forward, my shoulders are down. Good job. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. All right, keeping that right foot on that step. So now we're gonna do a split squat. So what I want you to do is I want you to inch your left leg forward. You might have to kind of bounce a little bit. I'm using my wall here to get set up. We're gonna do a split squat, which means you are lowering. Again, it's just a lunge without movement. Here we go. And that pelvis goes straight down and my movement's coming from my pelvis and bending my back leg. So that right leg should be feeling a little worked right now because it's been carrying some load. Okay, nice work. Got us on the clock. So typically we just use time in these strength circuits because I know I go slower on reps, I've got a longer body, um, and sometimes you need to take a break, and that's totally fine. We're going to do three more here. Here's three, two, and one. All right, come on out. Shake those legs out a little bit. If you need to, you can give your little glutes a little percussion. Play that little drummer boy on them. All right, and then we're gonna switch up our legs. So we just did a right leg, now we're gonna put our left leg forward to do a forward lunge. All right, so back that right leg up as much as you can, or if you have more room behind you, I want your foot on the edge of the step and your leg farther back, but that is not my reality this morning. All right, here we go. Got us on the clock. So we're doing the same thing, other leg. So yeah, so going back to the time thing, so that way, everybody can kind of go at their own pace, go at their own modification level, take a break, grab a drink of water if they want to, and then still meet up for the next exercise, which I like. I think, you know, there's a lot of room for nice range of levels there if you just use time. Um, and usually we offer modifications. So like if this was a um, Benny Happy Miles class, you could also have some weights in your hands here. I wouldn't recommend it for this first time through just because I know I'm just getting a sense of what this feels like in my body. Here's three, two, one. So now we're gonna do those squats, split squats. You're gonna pull your um, left leg in a little bit so your toes are facing forward. Here we go. I've got us on the clock. So we just got a kind of a multi-level squat here. Good job. So when we squat, every time I squat, I think about, I've got that imaginary chair behind me. I am trying to sit down, okay? I'm not leaning too far forward. Um, the idea is to keep your back straight, your chest up. I know it's a little bit harder with an elevated squat like this, but that's eventually the goal, or the goal, <laughs> I should say, not eventually. All right, got about 10 more seconds doing this. Good work, you guys. Nice, getting nice and warmed up. Here's three, two, one. All right, now we're switching our position again. So that left leg is behind me. I'm inching my right leg forward so that I have, I can still see my toes underneath me. 
and we're going straight up and down. Here we go. So this is one where, I mean, I have this wall right in front of me, so I can use that for balance. A chair next to me is good. Um, you know, this is definitely a little bit, bit of a balance tightrope, <laughs> I guess you could say. And especially because my legs are a little tired already from doing that first round. So all good though, you guys got this. We've got about 15 seconds left of this one. Then we'll shift to, shift to our upper body. Here's five, four, three, two, and last one. Woo, good job. Okay, doing some push-ups. Choices are, you can be on the ground. You could use a wall. If you have a set of stairs or even one step, you can also use that first step. Or if you happen to be near a set of stairs, um, I like to do them on the stairs. So I'm four steps up right now. Um, we're gonna do, go for a minute in three, two, one. Here we go. So no matter where you're doing these, I personally advocate for pulling your elbows back into your sides to keep shoulder discomfort at a minimum. But if you like a little bit wider stance in your push-ups and don't have any problem with that, you can do that. The other thing is that our butt is down. I can see it might. Then you wanna keep a nice straight line. And that goes for whether you're on your knees or your toes. So doing them on an elevated step like this is easier than doing them on the ground. Makes you feel kind of badass. We've got 15 more seconds. Here's three, two, and one. Good job. All right, come on down. We're gonna do an elevated bridge, okay? So if you don't have a step where you don't wanna do this, you can um, just do a bridge on the ground. It's gonna be a glute bridge. So I'm gonna have my head facing away from you. I am putting my feet on the step. Um, you, probably your heels are gonna rest on it, but if you can get your whole foot on the step, that's a good idea. We're just gonna bridge up and down in three, two, one. So my arms are extended by my sides. I'm lifting my glutes up. I'm squeezing them. I'm coming back down. So elevating it just gives a little bit of a different angle. Gets into your hamstrings a little bit more. Works that booty a different way. All good. No such thing as a bad glute bridge, right? Good job. Just going up and down. Keeping your knees forward. Let's not try to let the knees collapse in on themselves. If you need to, think about having a, a ball in between your knees that you're squeezing. Good job. Got 20 more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Whew. All right, come on down from the bridge, stand up. Next thing that we're gonna do is a thing called the hip hike. And so um, you, I mean, you need to be standing on your step, okay? On one foot, okay? So I have my left foot on my step, my right foot is dangling next to it, okay? So the hip hike moves your right hip by using your left hip as its lever as it's gear shift, okay? So I shift down and I shift back up. Okay, so my left, my left stabilizing muscles, my left booty basically, left hip, is the one that's pulling my right one up and down. Of course my right one's moving a tiny bit on its own um, <laughs> vol uh, volition, but the idea is, is we wanna integrate the whole body, okay? This isn't just, I'm gonna just think about my right hip moving. Think about that movement originating from the core and radiating out to that left hip. 
Um, and I do have us on the clock. We're going to go for a minute on each side just to get this movement pattern down. Good work. And I feel it a lot in my left hip right now. Okay, that's where I should be feeling it because that's the one, that's the movement, right? That's the stabilizing. It's helping me keep my body all as one web of interconnected ligaments, tendons, muscles. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. All right, you may need to pound on that left glute for a second. It's gonna be the mover in this next one, okay? So now I'm on my right foot, same idea. Left foot dangles, right foot is the driver. In three, two, one, here we go. Down and up. So again, if this is something that like standing on one leg is a little bit too much for you, you can always stand next to a wall, have a chair, have something close to you that you can lightly hold on to. Good work. Nice and tight core. Think about those abs being engaged as you drive that left hip up and down using your right hip. We got 20 more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, nice work, ladies. Our last one, let me look at my, uh, my cheat sheet here. We're gonna do a couple tricep dips, okay? So again, if you have this bottom step, I'll use my bottom step. My palms are on this step. My fingers face forward, okay? I inch my body out. Except for that, I actually I should say I inch my feet out because the idea is, is you want to keep your spine close to the thing that you're going up and down from. So whether you're using a chair, a step, and I've got us on the clock, so our elbows are going straight back and straight forward and then straight up. Okay? So a couple ways that you can make this a little bit more difficult if you are a tricep dip um, devotee, which I have not been of late, I will say, is you can move your feet farther away from you, but again, keep that booty and that spine close to the step. We're not trying to create some kind of inverted triangle here, okay? You can lift one leg off the ground. That's gonna create a little bit more tension in your feet and your legs and your arms for sure. So lots of ways that you can make this harder if, you, if a minute is clutch for you, if you're good at that. All right, here we go. Got about less than 20 seconds. The other thing is gluing your legs together and your feet together. Gives you a little bit smaller platform to work from. That's gonna make it a little bit more challenging. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, come on up. All right, that was one round. We're gonna kind of do a little bit of an abbreviated round here. We're gonna start right into our split squat, okay? So that's gonna be that backward one. We're not gonna do the whole series. Instead, I've got my left leg on the bench, on the step, I've got my right leg in front of me, inching it out in front of me so that when I go down, my knee comes down over my ankle. Here we go, in three, two, and one. If this feels like too much for you, you can turn it around and do the front squat, or you can just do regular squats on the ground or the air squat, that, that multi-level air squat that we did the other time. All good, I just want you to keep moving, okay? This is obviously giving us a little single leg strength, which comes in key for running, because it's one leg to the other. Hopefully you never have both legs on the ground <laughs> when you're running, except for when you're taking a break. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Stand back up, switch leg positions, okay? So that 
Uh, other leg goes back. I've got my right leg back on the step. I've got my left leg inched out as far as I can in front of me in three, two, one. Here we go. So this is a movement should be a little bit more familiar now if it wasn't earlier. So if you can, let's think a little bit about posture. Let's think about a straight spine up and down. Let's think about looking forward, not down at your toes. Again, and that pelvis goes straight up and down, straight up and down. Okay, we're not leaning forward. We're going straight up and down. Good work. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. All right, back on the ground. We're gonna come back to our planks. We're gonna do side planks, 30 seconds a side, okay? So you can either be on your knees, same as a front plank, knees, toes, forearm, or your palm. We're gonna go in three, two, one. We're gonna lift up from our hips. Either way, whether you're on your knees or your toes, you are gonna pretend like you have a skewer going down through both hips, okay? So our hips are nice and stacked. My um, upper shoulder is nice and back. I'm not crawling over, folding over onto it. Good work. We got about five more seconds on this side. Three, two, and one. All right, roll over, switch sides. Here we go in three, two, one, and we're up in our side plank. Same idea here. This side might feel better or worse. So if you are on your feet, you can be uh, stack your feet one on top of each other, or you can tight rope them one in front of the other. Whichever one feels better to you. Got 10 more seconds on this side. Lift that hip, keep those hips nice and tight and balanced and stacked. Here's three, two, and one. All right, since we're down here, we're gonna do our last set of glute bridges on your step. So get yourself set up. Here we go. In three, two, and one. Here we go, arms extended down by your sides. Feet hip width apart. We're going up and down, squeezing those glutes, pretending like you have a dollar in them and no one's gonna take that dollar away or pretend like you have a hundred dollars in there <laughs> and really no one's gonna take it away. Some other options, if you wanna switch things up a tiny bit, you can pull your legs together. Again, that's similar to the tricep dip, making a little bit smaller platform. You can put your arms straight up in the air so that you don't have your arms anchoring you. Good work. You've got 20 more seconds. Also, if you are working on your one-legged glute bridge, your single leg glute bridge, an elevated way is a nice way to start it. It's kind of like training wheels. So just, just an FYI. Here's three, two, and one. Come on down, stand back up. We've got a set of push-ups. So whether you wanna be on your mat, on the step, on your knees, on your toes, whatever sounds good. I'm gonna go back to that fourth step up for me. We're gonna go in three, two, one. All right, lowering that chest, pushing it back up. Good work, you guys. This is hard for me, too. We're almost halfway there. Last set of the day, so that's the good thing about 30-minute strength circuits. We don't have room for a lot of rounds. <laughs> Let's 
Let's do the last three together. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Woo! Good work. All right, step back up on that step. We are gonna do, um, instead of hip heights this time, we are gonna do one-legged squats. So if you'd rather do hip heights again, you can do that. If you want to try some one-legged squats, you may try that as well. Um, again, a wall, a chair nearby is helpful. I've got my left foot planted on the step. I'm keeping my hips level, and I'm sitting back in that chair just a tiny bit, coming back up. Okay? This is not a pistol squat unless you are really good and then going to CrossFit. This is really digging in to those standing glutes, keeping your knee tracking forward, okay? So you can see I, my left knee not in the best shape, so I'm only going down a couple inches, and that's fine. We'll do three more together here. Here's three, keep that chest up, butt back, two, last one, one. Good work. So let's switch sides. So now I'm on my right foot, same idea. Here we go. Butt goes back to do a one-legged squat, okay? I uh, stay up. And typically, we would do these in like sets of five. We're gonna just do 10 total today, about more or less good enough, right? Five, four, whew, three, sorry, I lost my balance, two, and one. Nice work. All right, we're getting back down for our triceps. Almost to the end, ladies, almost to the end. Good work. So get yourself set up, get that butt, get your spine close to the step in three, two, one. Here we go. So yeah, so this is uh, just a good representation of um, a lot of things. What you can do at home with a step in 30 minutes. You know, I think sometimes we think it's got to be really complicated or extra special moves that, you know, some power on Instagram and make you feel especially badass. I'm not against those. <laughs> I like those too, but Sometimes I think just keeping it simple and throwing on some great music is a good call. This is also, uh, in many happy miles, we do live strength three times a week, most weeks, and this is what it looks like, more or less. We have different tools sometimes, nothing that you couldn't gather up in your house or buy for less than $20. We've got five more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, and down. All right, we're gonna end with our, a little bit of a cool down, right? Um, we're just gonna step up and down on that step, okay? In three, two, one, let's lead with your left leg, or right leg first, just up and down. So, yeah, and I have to say, the people that have been consistent with their strength, whether they come live or they um, do it on replay, they can't make it live, have really seen gains in both just feeling strong and not getting injured. And feeling strong both in everyday life and in running. So yes, I know that there's CrossFit, I know that there's going to gyms and lifting heavy, and I, again, I am not against any of that. I love it, but I also feel like there's a place for consistency, and consistency usually comes from keeping things simple. So that's what we try to do. But we definitely get into your glutes, <laughs> we get into your core, have different focuses. Here's three, two, one, let's switch legs. And you know, we call back to uh, the 80s. I feel like I should be doing grapevine and, and spreading my arms out <laughs> from my step classes that I used to go to. 
We do play music when we don't record. Um, so there is that too. All right, we got 30 more seconds. Good job, you guys. Great work today. You showed up. You feel better now. Got a nice kind of rolling start into your day. Here's three, two, and one. All right, good work, you guys. I'm proud of you for coming. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Thank you for showing up for everyone else. We all push each other into movement, into momentum, into taking care of ourselves, and uh, it's a great way to live. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.